so basically I forgot that I had that other toaster, that real one. And I was just hooking stuff up and I was like, okay, I want it, I want this to be on the, the toaster. So let me grab it. I, I grabbed it, I plugged it in, but I'm also plugging in like, I had some other light I had to plug in or things, you know. But anyway, a, li a little bit of time's passed and I start to notice a smell. Something in the room is burning and I'm looking around and all of a sudden I realize the, the game inside the toaster, I used the real toaster. <laughs> so I'm like, fuck. I will say it, it works as a toaster. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I forgot if it was Back to the Future, one of the original nerd episodes, you actually put a game, like you do it, and then yeah. but you fake it. Yeah. To, like, and it just explodes or whatever, but yeah. you actually did it in real life. It's time for the Cine Massacre Podcast. And now, the hosts with the most, James, Kieran, and Justin. We are back again. This is the Cinemassacre podcast. We hope to see you at too many games coming up. Yeah, we'll have Rex Viper is going to be there and perform for the first time. Yes. You, are you nervous about that playing for the first time? You know what? I am. Um, but every time I've ever been nervous, it always worked out great. There was this one time I remember... Um, in college, I uh, had my uh, junior film playing in front of an audience, and uh, it wasn't the first time I had something played in front of an audience, but I remember being very nervous um, because at the end of the school year, they would uh, play all the, the film majors' um, films for that year in front of an audience, and like everybody's parents came and everything, and it was a you know fairly big auditorium uh, packed with people, and isn't that kind of what you want when you think about it? Don't you just want a room full of people to watch your movie? Like, you put all that work into it and everything, and all you want is for it to be seen. Because I think every artist in some way wants, you know, to get a little attention for what they did. And um, so you get there, and you're like, well, this is what I wanted, right? Why the hell am I so nervous? And I remember walking to that uh, show, and I was just shaking. And... Um, Cause I don't know why, like, like I was just worried like, oh, what are they going to think of my movie when it played? It was Curse of the Cat Lover's Grave. It was a horror film. I, I think and, I've seen that one on your website actually. Yeah. It's like real gory and there's like, you know, heads being, uh, exploded, uh, you know, what that are made out of like watermelons or whatever it was. And, um, I just remember being so nervous. I was like puking to the point where I was just like dry heaving. I had nothing left to puke. I was just like in an alley like walking on my way to the show and I was just like had to just stop on the sidewalk and like I think I went into like an alley and I was just just puking like on the on the pavement because I was so nervous and like I didn't know what I was going to do and I'm just shaking like crazy I go to the show and you know it all fills up and I'm just so nervous up to the point when the, when the movie screens and then once it started everybody was into it and when um there was like these little like shock horror moments, like these jump scares in it. And the jump scares worked. And I remember when the first one happened, like I just saw heads like bob up, like all, the whole, all the seats in front of me, people just jumped. And then after it, like you heard these gasps, but then you just heard laughter after, like they're just laughing that they uh, jumped at a student film. And at that moment I was like, oh my God, holy shit, the jump scare worked. And then like the gory parts came and people were just laughing and like going nuts. And by the end of it, people were just standing up and applauding and they were cheering for so long, like through all the credits at the end, they were cheering into the, the beginning of the next film that started. And I felt bad about that, but I was so happy that, you know, it, it went over so well. And from that point on, it was always just like, I got a little less nervous each time. Mm -hmm. Cause when my senior film played, I remember uh, that was Legend of the Blue Hole. When that one played, uh, I remember looking in the program and it was in there twice because there were two nights and it was playing the first night and it was playing the second night. Nobody else's movies were playing two nights. I was I was like, something's wrong. Like, And I asked uh, my professor, I was like, hey, um, uh, is something wrong with the program? Because like, which night's my movie playing? It's playing, it, it says in there, it's, it's on both nights. And, and she says to me, oh, well, we decided to put it on both nights to give more people a chance to see it because we thought it was really great. And I was like, whoa, really? Like, wow, you thought it was that good where you, you played it both nights? And then um, they also gave an award out to like the best film. And uh, one of my friends got it. It wasn't me. 
and I was sad. And so it was like, I should have been just happy they played mine two, two nights, but then it's always those little things that it just made me sad that I didn't win, yeah. which I shouldn't have been. But, mm. uh, you know, as an artist, you get very sensitive sometimes and you get nervous about your work and everything. So long story short, I am more excited than anything to do Rex Viper because it is a brand new thing for me. Um, I've been dreaming about being on stage like that for the past 20 years or so i've been like a, a secret you know guitar player uh i'm not like very advanced i don't shred or anything but uh being the rhythm guitarist in this band has really been the most fun thing i i've done in a while i'm so excited about this so yeah i hope to see everyone at the too many games convention outside of philly uh in october and yeah i guess we'll move on the what you doing uh, well, I guess I'll just get into it. Uh, like there was that Action Park documentary that. Mm. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Class yeah. Action yeah, Park. Yeah. Class Action Park. Yeah, I think uh, it was on HBO Max. I've almost died there. Like, have, twice. You, been, have you been to Action Park? I well, I never heard of it until Weird New Jersey. Okay, I, I didn't know about this because I, it's like North Jersey. It's like somewhere. Yeah, around, you know, but it's in the mountains. Yeah, yeah. 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 Our, never, um, yeah. our buddy never, Rob Steiner. Yeah, he he we, told, told me about it. We yeah. went with. I've I've been there with him twice actually. Like, yeah, yeah. I. I Love Action Park. Oh, my God. <laughs> I love that park. I, well, I, I've never been on a ride that gives you the fear of God. <laughs> uh, and yeah. after that, every other ride just seems like pussy shit. Yeah, I don't it's, even it's know. For like... anyone who doesn't know, it was this uh, It was this park that was just like a disaster. Like, it was terrible. And there's you know people who died there. Yeah. It's really sad. The documentary is great. I mean, it's very, very sad at times. Um, it, it's, it's such a uh, unique kind of thing. Thing where this kind of park would never exist today, but it just sort of happened in the right set of circumstances, just like in weird New Jersey, where this park that had these rides that nobody thought through. And, um, you know, but it was kind of like a like a generational thing that people remember people have been there and like that's... yeah it, it, it comes from the very the not to say boomery but like the very like the walk it off generation yeah like ah it's fine fuck it well no like, we, oh, like we, we all have, went uh, like they weren't concerned about things as much like you know no, yeah definitely not well yeah. we all went when it was action park again but yeah, it they, wasn't yeah. nearly what it was back then but we all got hurt mm. oh yeah but the thing is for instance actually my favorite ride just burnt down Really? At Action Park, a water ride burnt down. Yeah. Just to put that into perspective. Yeah, because 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 Action Park opened <laughs> and then it, and then it closed and now it's Mountain Creek. Yeah, and they tried the to rebrand it. Yeah, and now it's Mountain Creek. It's, again. A, it's yeah. a ride called High Anxiety, and it's this ride where you get so it's four people. I went on with Justin, Rob Steiner, and Chris Gasler. It was the three it, it, us four. It, you get on a four person, you know, tube. Mm. And you go down this one slide that's like a straight down yeah, slide, like and then you go funnel. up a giant funnel. Well, there was that cannonball loop one that that they say in the document. It was like a, a Looney Tunes type thing, like with the physics that yeah, you never... hit the top. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That is the most People would terrifying. People come out with broken noses yeah. and stuff. I can't think of anything more terrifying in a park oh, like. Uh, the... <sighs> Like, so when I was there, I did the cliff dive, mm -hmm. and I'm a yeah. pretty weighty we dude. Cliff uh, I, I cliff dive, I hit the water, and, I, and I'm and i not doing the pencil thing. I'm like, oh, and I hit. So now, you know, like when you belly flop and your arm and like your stomach gets hurt? Like that, but my arms. Mm -hmm. So now my arms are out of commission. I hit the bottom of the, 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 the 18 foot it's water a, yeah, pool. Yeah, it's an 18 foot it pool. It knocks wow. the air out of me. Oh. And now I can't swim because my arms are like, oh, I'm, I'm dead. Oh, and the water's freezing. And the, and oh. the water's ice cold mountain water. Oh. And the next person is already jumping and yeah. it's raining. They don't do the thing where it's just somebody watches when they're oh, out. No, and they then go, do. Okay, you're good. No, they're nope. like, they're fucking 15 year old no, they're kids. They're 15 year old kids mostly on their phones. So I'm down there and I'm squirming Wait, on away. Their, on you their know. phones, like at that time? Oh, yeah. Oh, this, when was, only we like, went, this, this was only three was, years so, ago. Well, wasn't this like, oh, no, 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 no. Dude, you're this place is still a shithole. This place I is still about open. like the 80s. No, it's still a shithole. Action Park is still open. It's just not called Action Park anymore. It's Mountain Creek. Yeah. So has it gotten any better? They got rid of the loop, but all the rides that are there it, are still like, there. It, it's like, still, you know, like if you're going on the one um, California water rapid, dude, you, still, you have still have to wear lacrosse. Our helmets. one friend had to save Justin from one of the rides, like no joke. Yeah, he I had went, to jump I, in and save Justin. I went down this one ride. It, that this one's called the, the Cannonball. Cannonball. Yeah, but it's the one the, where you you come out and and uh, the slide ends and it's ten feet above the water. Uh, oh, I've heard so, of that. So that's and, still there. So, so, yeah. So I go down like this, right? And I hit the turn, 
and because it hit the turn so fast, inertia, weight, all that, mm -hmm. I'm going like this. I come out upside down, like stomach so, first, head first. Yeah, you you come out, uh, so there's a part where it curves, right? And mm. when I did it, I literally went from the bottom to the top. Mm. I was I was facing down, I was upside down pretty much. I flipped backwards. But I went back down. Justin went up, fell down, came down, like, so Justin's on his arms like mm -hmm. this, because that they tell you like this. Yeah. Justin came out, Head on first. stomach first, like out yeah. of the thing, like like, like with my stomach down, and I hit the water in my neck, like, and and we thought Justin was knocked out because you literally go yeah. up the slide and then come down. But you know, like when you take, like they tell you when you take a um, like 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 a fish and put him in an aquarium, and if it's the wrong water temperature, they could just die because it shocks them. Yeah. When I hit that ice cold water, yeah. every muscle in my body fucking atrophied, and I was just like that. So when I when I grabbed the ladder, I couldn't physically let go of the, the ladder. The water's like Jeez. 50 degrees when Jesus you hit it. Because it's it's like it was river awesome. water. The water was colder than you could believe. Like, you get up to the water and you go... <laughs> and you're wow. just breathing in. You can't breathe out because your lungs are in shock. Oh, it's, my God. But let me tell you. And, and, when the yeah. documentary, too, they showed... Like, people were, like, were dicks. Like, they yeah. were, like... Like, when people were on the rafts and they would almost, like, slide off the, th the thing and fall. They'd be like... Like trying to cheer yeah. when the people would fall, and th and then when people would like do like the the rope swing or whatever, or they would they they'd be yelling. I'm like pussy, you know. Oh like yeah, these, yeah, yeah. Like no, that's these. that's the ride I got hurt on was the swing. I I uh, I hit the water like this, and my arm bent mm. up, and I pulled out every muscle from here all the way to my ribs. Like I was like this the rest of the time, wow. and I just had red all down me. Okay, wow. <laughs> okay, so I did not know you guys had so much firsthand experience with action parts. Oh, yeah. It's so really yeah. fun there. Well, part part of this this category, <laughs> this thought process I'm talking about here is like I kind of have a little bit of like a you know like a vicarious uh, when I when I watch these type of things, I'm like, well, geez, I'm glad I didn't go go to that. Um, you guys seem like you're happy. Yo, you can it, drink I, a Jack and Coke oh. on the rides. Oh my god, that's why we went. So, <laughs> that's why you went. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, you talking about the blue hole earlier. That's like when we went there and from the VR video, yeah. and me and Tony went into the blue yeah, hole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you were kind of like, uh, it's a little, you know, there's all this superstition behind it. You're like, like I don't think die. we should. And well, we just, like, I don't think it was like anything supernatural. It was just like, I heard actual stories. Like people, drown, people yeah. drown because there's like these undercurrents or like there's a cold <laughs> spring, your body goes into shock or there's yeah. quicksand under it. There's a million things that could happen. God, I wish something what happened. Mean, oh like, my God. Well, you wish something happened to Tony? Yeah. <laughs> oh I wish something happened to Tony in there. Oh boy. Bye, I, Tony. I've taken swim so, lessons since I was like a kid. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I swim like a fish. So I've never, like, that's the one thing is like when you go to Action Park, they ask you, are you able to swim? Mm. Can you swim? Yeah. All these things. Like they ask you every single ride. I, I will say, I won't fuck with the ocean. Really? Fuck that, Rip dude! I used shit. to, I I'm used to swim. Ocean, yeah. I'm from Long Island, no, no, so we I, used to I go mean, to the beaches I, I constantly, mean doing stupid stunts and like doing yeah. the action park. Like I wouldn't do that at the ocean. Oh, I used to do. I used to swim out like 40 oh, feet from the from that. the ocean. Oh, I love the ocean. <laughs> oh. So anyway, the question about like what I've been watching is yeah, like sorry. a lot of these uh like these type of documentaries. There's there's the uh, the Firefest ones. Have you seen seen those? Yeah. I yet? haven't watched yeah. those yet. Yeah, there's one. I think one is Netflix. One is Hulu. They're both basically the same type of documentary but it's worth seeing them both because mm -hmm. they'll both they'll give you a different, different you know, perspectives pers yeah. yeah i mean it's all the same thing like fire fest was a disaster yeah um but recently there was another documentary that just came out uh, about woodstock 99 and it was on hbo uh and it was produced by uh, one of the producers was sean keegan who uh, was my friend who also produced angry video game nerd the movie right and uh this this documentary is great yeah. i mean uh it it basically you know it takes you back to Woodstock '99, but but all the I, I wasn't there by the way. I but this yeah. is yeah. This I was, was a kid, but I watched it on pay per view. Yeah. my oh, cousin had it. I did too. Yeah, we saw like the degradation over the, the weekend fires and everything. Too. Yeah. yeah, it was bad. I mean, like when you watch the documentary, you start to see how it was worse than you even um you know remembered like seeing because this this gives you like all types of probably a lot of footage that hasn't been shown yet. Um, it was bad, um, but you know you'll see all the the fires and people burning stuff and everything. Mm -hmm. It just makes you wonder why do people do this? Like some people just n need like something to. <laughs> some people just want to watch the world. Burn, well, we, Mr. we watched Bruce. it because of Limp yes. Biscuit. You know, when I was a yeah, kid, yeah. Limp Biscuit was the shit. So like, <laughs> still are. That, and and we watched the Limp Biscuit performance, but like. 
Yeah. You know, there were people la- like stuff. launching things and, and destroying like the, uh, yeah. yeah, exactly. You have, you know, if you yeah, think yeah. about the original, uh, you know, uh, Woodstock, you have hippie bands and, and Santana mm-hmm. and Sha Na Na. Yeah. And then you have Limp Biscuit and Rage Against, was Rage Against Machine there? At the time in yeah. 99, were they? Uh, 99, yeah. So you have these angry ass bands and yeah. angry ass people, and then you're charging them well, $9 for a bottle of water. Yeah, I mean, it was terribly run. There's a lot of problems. Um, but the lineup, like at its like at its inception, like if you just went to like, what was the idea of it? Like it, it's a, it was an incredible lineup because mm-hmm. it wasn't just rock. It was hip hop, it was pop. It was like all kinds. Of, it was basically like any artist that was popular at that time all together in one place. I think that's a great idea, but it didn't work out. Um, and the documentary, it's, you know, it's very sad. There's, there's one guy telling a story about his friend who died there. Um, but it, it's, it's heavy stuff. Like when you watch this, uh, so I've been interested in those type of documentaries, it seems, uh, I mean, I'm interested in like lots of types of documentaries, but, um, if there's any more like that, that you think I should see, you know, like Firefest, Woodstock 99, and uh, like more Class Action Park. Place and time event documentary. It's kind of like a place and time type thing. It's it's something where that went wrong. And yeah. why did it go wrong? How was it poorly I, run? I can't wait what to happened? see the Rex Viper at Too Many Games, What Went Wrong documentary. <laughs> oh, <yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I'm working on that now. <laughs> you ever see McMillions? No. The one about oh. the it's about the uh, watch the, McMillions. Yeah, it's about the, uh, oh. the the Monopoly McDonald's game and how okay. it was completely corrupted by mm-hmm. the mafia and all this stuff. And, oh wow! And all the people who wanted it was like a uh, like it, it, it's really ridiculous how, what happened with that game because when I was a kid I used to play the Monopoly game all the time and I used to win like you know a free hamburger or whatever because of my you know, free okay. drink or something. But all the top prizes were were rigged. Yeah, for like. 15 years throughout it and wow. they found out halfway through that like the uh the fbi huh. started getting things about it saying all the Mc- the mcdonald's monopoly things are rigged so they started looking into it and they found out like yeah it's totally rigged and they talk about the they talk to yeah, the people who are part it. of it wow, okay. it's it's good it's Mc it's millions. on um it's on hbo max Cool, yeah, yeah. I'm really into documentaries, and I've I've watched you know some heavy ones lately. Like sometimes I'll you know you know I'm in the mood for something that's going to be uh, serious and educational. Hmm. Speaking of documentaries, uh, I was talking to someone that wanted to do a uh, a documentary on me going to Japan. Okay, and that's because hold on, are you going to get to go to Japan? Uh, probably not, but because uh, apparently I am a Japanese mascot. <laughs> I saw you tweet about that uh, a little while ago. So yeah. what is this all about? So, hold on. I got all, I got all this stuff here because my friend in Japan sent me all this stuff. So there is a store in Japan, and the store is called Japan. <laughs> <laughs> it's a drugstore in Japan. They sell, I don't know, drugs. It's kind of like a CVS or a Rite Aid. <laughs> And as you can see, the store is like, it says like Japan and it's all this. Like, wow, look stickers. at the stickers. <laughs> and they have clocks and things and, and like all this stuff of, the, of this goddamn guy. And this oh is. Oh my God. This is their mascot, the refreshing old man. That's the refreshing name. old man? Yeah, this is the refreshing old man. <laughs> <laughs> and he's the mascot for this company in Japan. But someone posted on like Reddit or Twitter, like, oh, this guy looks like you. And I'm like, what the fuck? And then my friend in Japan and also um, Frazier from Video Games Awesome, awesome video games, mm-hmm. uh, did a little research and like found the place. And this one guy I know is like, hey, do you want to just like go there and like dress up as the guy and go in there and we'll film like this documentary? And I'm like, that sounds awesome. So that's me. Well, that's that's interesting. Maybe I, I love the piggy kiss. banks. <laughs> you need to put money in those. Oh, Only God. put yen. I think they're actually the size of a, of a hundred yen coin. Yeah. So I don't know. Wow. I, I so you're big was... in Japan, basically. Are the, is that an ear scratch? That was actually the title we came up with. Oh, is that, really? Is that thing to scratch your ear with? This? That, that stick. An ear scratching I stick? I believe that's to scratch your ear with. I think it's for stirring tea or something. Oh, really? I thought it was to scratch your... You see where it is? Like, yeah. you see that? I'm pretty sure that's to scratch your ear with. Really? Yeah. Huh. Like, you're supposed to stick it in your ear and pull wax out with it. I wouldn't doubt it. I'm not. I'm not even kidding. I I oh, actually have gotten it. things like that, and they're like, yeah, because I I like sticking things in my ear. You like sticking things in your ear. Yeah, I have okay. a lot of Asian ear scratcher devices. 
Okay. Huh. I didn't know that was a thing. Okay. Yeah, it's a, it is, and I have a few, and so, I love them. Oh, uh-huh. wait. Um, anyway, aside from Kieran's ear fetish, <laughs> this is the refreshing Old Man Banks from the store in Japan. And if you are in Japan, feel free to go to this store. The refreshing Old Man. Yeah. So that, <laughs> that's what I have here. <laughs> Should so, we start you calling go. you the refreshing old man? Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. <laughs> the refre- You are and, a refreshing old man. And, so, <laughs> and he has like uh, like really red lipstick too. I should start. Is doing he that. based on a real person? I think it might have been the original creator of the place or something. I have no idea. Very interesting, for sure. All right, Karen, what are you up to? Well, I uh, <laughs> I was uh, introduced to a new type of beer, which I was very confused by when we uh, first drank it. Yeah. Because I didn't understand I was what it there was. For this, yes. There were three possibilities as to what it was. Uh one was um so on the menu it said Yingling Flight. And I and, was and unsure. Yingling, Yingling is our local brew. Yeah, Yingling is the local brew. It's a Philadelphia beer, which is so common that uh traditionally you can order it by saying Give me a lager. Give me a lager. And yeah. you say lager, you get a yinling. And you will get a yin. And, and that's like how they market it on the commercials and everything. But yeah. so we saw yingling flight. And I didn't know if it was a flight. If you're if you're into uh, microbrews, like uh, a flight is usually for tastes. Like a sampling. Exactly. Of a beer. Or if it was yingling light and they accidentally put an F before it on the and misprinted the oh. menu. Well, now it looked peculiar because I'm like, okay, yin, a yinling flight, but it said flight, it dev- and that's that's what so I, I know a flight is. It was like yingling yeah. lager, yingling light, maybe the black and tan, and maybe the <laughs> Oktoberfest <laughs> or something, yeah, because golden. they do make different, yeah, golden ale. So I thought that was that's what it might be. So we ordered it, and it's its own beer. It's yingling flight. It's a it's a super light. Yeah, you like like Bud like Platinum. Yeah, basically, or like uh, even like a like Michelob Ultra or something, but where it's why, like a ninety six like calorie almost kind a of water. Thing. It's like a water yeah. beer. It's like very very light, but it's called Flight for whatever reason. Yeah. Like, does so, it fly or like you know? Yeah, but we're all there. And then once we got that, I have to say it was hilarious just to think like, okay, we were thinking of a flight of we this, super like, overthought what it was. We're going to bring you out a <laughs> a flight of our. Finest Yinling, yeah, <laughs> of our yinling. finest Yinling. It's like our finest Budweiser, yeah, like, exactly. Like it's, Budweiser, it's just a beer yeah. that you know Yingling is is pretty much the yeah. uh, the Coors or yeah. Bud or whatever light it's Miller. Better than that, but yeah, it's a it's be, it's definitely is better than them, but it is like uh, regarded the same way. It's a it's a a cheap beer. You get it, you know, in Philly, you can get it a pint of it for five bucks or whatever, three dollars for a pint, and yeah. twenty two is a five. But here's it's the thing. Cheap. We got to actually do a flight of yinling sometime. Yeah. Because there's enough types of them. You could probably do like a six, Especially eight, there, at least. Like, there is an Oktoberfest, and their yingling yeah, Oktoberfest yeah. is pretty good. It, it was funny because when the waitress came over, I was explaining, because we had this whole conversation while it was going on. I'm like, wait a minute. And then we're having this conversation. I'm like, wait. She said something weird. She said, oh, yeah, that one's good. I'm like, that one is good? Yeah. It was a little suspicious, but um, I mean, she didn't understand what we were asking, and, and and obviously we didn't explain ourselves enough, I guess. Like, we should have been like, hey, is, does this mean like a sampling? Or, yeah. But, you know, it was a... Must, we I did, remember it. She we was did really tell a, her. Like, yeah. we didn't know what we were well, going to no, yeah, yeah, We yeah. kind of just threw it out she, there. She, well, she was very apologetic, but it wasn't... <laughs> it, it was not it, her fault. It was yeah. nobody's no, fault. No, we said, like, like it's. Was, we didn't know. We wanted to understand what it was. Yeah. Yeah, everyone knows what a flight of wine or beer or yeah, whiskey yeah. is. You can't call your dr- you can't call anything alcohol flight. Yeah, because if you say, "Hey, I'll have a flight of like a scotch flight," yeah. and you bring yeah. you one scotch called flight, that's <laughs> fucked up. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I, I think they did it to be assholes. Yes, <laughs> that could be. I mean, honestly, oh. you'd think a, you'd think an alcohol company or a beer company would know not yeah. to do that. Fuck you, Yingling. Like, <laughs> oh my God. I mean, the only way that it could be more confusing is if they called it like the Yingling sampling. And that was um, the same week when we went to the Joe Bob event. Yes. Yeah. And that was fun. The last drive-in. Yeah. Joe Bob last drive-in show. It's going to be legendary. Yeah, that was the first annual Joe Bob's Jamboree. Mm-hmm. And uh, we were there. We had a Hack the Movies booth, and we were just hanging out there, too. Mm-hmm. And uh, a giant storm hit and flipped tents everywhere. Oh, and yeah. yeah. It was messy. And yeah, yeah. I couldn't believe that video uh, that, that Tony put up where the tent, as they're talking, the tent flies off. Did so you that, see yeah. that? That's, that uh, I, I didn't see one where it flies off, but uh, that it tent, was crazy. That tent 
Temp belongs to Ship to Shore. Yeah. Who are there selling vinyls, and they're the guys that make the ABGN game vinyl. Mm -hmm. So they're there with all the vinyls and stuff. Yeah, that's so awesome, by the way. I'm on, I'm, the nerd is on uh, the, the Joe, Joe Bob, Bob album. Yeah, yeah it's nice. so cool. They gave, gave me the, one of those in person there. It was great. Yeah. That entire event was a was a really fun time, honestly. Yeah, yeah. I, I had a great time. It, it was muddy and it was uh, humid, but it was fun. You know, oh, yeah, it was just too, yeah. And then, then you tweeted like, that thing of the, uh, the the Jack and Coke. Well, no, oh my God, the, the whiskey, whiskey, no, whiskey had, on the yeah, rocks. Yeah, oh right. my God. <laughs> no, I had one Jack and Coke, but I remember the best thing was just when I first brought out the bottle and I was just like, hey, check this out. And like you ran the camera and, uh, and then you tweeted it. The, the, I just put it on the rocks literally yeah. and was like hey it's whiskey on the rocks and i'm you know cracking up and you guys were like oh everybody was just like oh and no and then <laughs> and then i looked at the tweet and it had like twenty two thousand yeah uh likes I, I or think, retweets i think and half then... a million people saw it already it, it theoretically did better than like the last nerd episode like, like, so basically <laughs> i should just do things to waste people's time dad jokes. yeah that's yeah. always dad good. jokes just yeah. dad jokes dad jokes you should write a dad jokes book that'd be pretty good yeah yeah so um People kept making fun of me because I had bags on my feet. I oh, saw. yeah, yeah. And, and they were like, oh, he's wearing his expensive Gangar shoes. Well, well when, he's when, wearing um, expensive Gangar shoes, doesn't want to get them dirty. Uh -huh. I'm like, no, no, no. You don't understand. I've been doing this my entire life. What you do is you get your foot, you put two bags over it, you put them in your shoes, and then you put three bags over that and tie, you know, tie them up. And the reason you do that is you can wear your normal shoes instead of like galoshes or something like that, and your shoes won't get wet. And if it penetrates the bag your socks won't get wet you don't want wet feet you don't want trench foot not that you would that quickly i was my my feet were disgusting mm. by the end of it like Mine it was were, actually pretty i rough. just Lovely. wore the dirtiest uh shoes i had yeah, yeah. yeah I, I, I have really sketchers and they're fabric so they immediately soaked up all the water possible see and 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 i was also like trying to get our tents and i was talking to all the people from joe bob joe bob's production to the people that run the mahoning um to fans or whatever so i was all over the place i was going like through like i've seen people were walking across the field and they come out with no shoes because like mm. their foot seek they lost it yeah, yeah they're their feet seek it, uh, sink in, and when they pull their foot out, their shoe's gone. That shoe's gone. Bye. Uh -huh. So I, I, you know, I was just playing it safe. Yeah. It's like I, I can afford shoes; they're just in the bag. I yeah. saw the people putting the uh, Mo from Simpsons, where it's like, "You don't like my bags?" <laughs> like I laughed. About I thought that. it was funny. A lot of people <laughs> were like, "That's a good idea." I'm like, "I know." <laughs> so the other thing is, when we were driving back. You ready to talk about this, James? Well, I'm not the one who witnessed it, so uh, you guys can. Oh, this tell is happening it. now. Yeah. Okay, this is happening um, now. I'll, I'll tell it from my perspective. All right, everybody, <laughs> get ready for this. <laughs> so we're driving back to our uh, our, health, our hotel thing, and we stopped to get some drinks for people who are back at the hotel. Yeah, um, like like you know like normal drinks like ginger ale or whatever. I think and I was waiting in the car at the yeah, time. Yeah, yep. And I you know I I pull up and I go for inside this. I pull up into this convenience store and I don't want to name any of this stuff because I don't want people yeah, going I don't want, there. That's the thing too. Yeah, yeah. I don't um, want to. Um, you know it was you know it's it, 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 it in in the thirty mile vicinity of Mahoning, Pennsylvania, in some sort of radius. Yeah, in a big circle. So, um. Yeah, I go in the store. Kieran's like, "Hey, there's a beer store." And Kieran's drunk as shit I'm at this fucked. point. Yeah, I was like, uh, "Yeah, I was drinking heavily all throughout the day." I'm driving. I'm sober, and I'm like, "Kieran's like, hey, I'm gonna go next door, and I'm gonna get some beer." Because at this point, he's no longer Kieran. He is Beeren. <laughs> and when Beeren's a different guy, <laughs> so Beeren um, goes next door to get drinks. Yeah. So I go in the store. I buy what I gotta buy. I go to the car. I'm like, "Hey, James, where's Kieran at?" And he's like, "I don't know." And I go around the corner. And Kieran, you know, there's there's the store, an alley, and then the liquor store, and it's it's like ten yeah, o'clock so at night or something, yeah, and this, and this and town shuts down. Yeah, and I go up, and he's talking to two guys, and when I get up to him, they like walk away, and I'm like, Kieran, what what happened? And he was like, I was walking by, and there was two people, and they were banging in the alley. Yeah, with with finger guns. He was like, I was they were yeah. banging in the alley. So, I so I guess in my in my timeline. I walk off. Justin goes into the convenience store. I walk over to the uh, to the the liquor store, and there's there is this deep alley. It's about a fifty foot alley with uh, air conditioner units and everything. And uh, I walk, <laughs> and I'm hearing people making noises. And as I'm walking, and I am like I I am like stumbling over and everything, and I, I I'm, I'm strutting down the street. <laughs> And uh, I look to my right, and I look down the alley, and I just see two people going at it, like 
the pants are down around ankles in an butts alley are out in an alley yeah and and that's the thing like and i'm just like what what's going on down there and they're so you like would, yo you go away <laughs> like we're we're doing something and i'm like are you guys banging are you guys banging in the so air? and i your your instinct is to address it like so in your, because and yeah and i feel bad because if because, i saw um, it i'd be like oh shit and i'd walk away yeah with I, me it'd I'm be like, awkward right yeah i think most people would walk away but you were like are you both I was like, and, and I was like, whoa, <laughs> what's going on down here? And so, so, uh, they're hey, like, are Yo. you both banging in the neck? <laughs> <laughs> so they're like, shut up. And I'm like, uh, all well, right, I'm going to go buy some beer. And I'm telling the guy and I walk into the place and I'm, and I'm buying the beer. I, I buy beer and I go over to the cashier and the guy is just this guy working there. And I'm like, Hey, uh, there's a couple people fucking in the alley next door to this store. And I didn't say banging this time. I said, so the guy said, Fire. I wanted to um, address the severity of it. And he was like, what? And I was like, yeah. And he's like, for real? And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, well, let's go. And I'm like, what? And let's he's go like, what? He's Join like, in? he's like, we got to go see <laughs> this. He's like, there's people doing this in the alley. Like, we got to go see this. And the guy was a little bit younger than me. And I'm like, are we? Yeah, sure. Let's go. So we, me and him. You know, I pay for my beer and we run in. Well, no, no, but, I don't think you came back with beer. No, because yeah, oh, I, I, I heard that they like he they closed, closed the, the store. store they closed the you store like right after I beer. never got the beer. The yeah, so we we ran out there and they were gone. The 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 cashier guy was like, "What the fuck, dude?" And I was like, "Dude, I swear to God." This was happening as I was walking in. I don't know what to tell you. And then, and then another gone. guy came up. There was two people there with you. I think they they, they must have both. Well, no. So the store. one. So one of the guys. So there was the 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 cashier, and then there was a guy in line behind me. Oh, so you. So you told oh, and the maybe guy that guy didn't get beer either. Actually, now that okay. I think so about what it. happened was you went in the store. Hey, this guy's banging in the alley. Let, and he goes, okay, let's leave the store, go out there. And then he took you and the other customer in the store out to see if people were banging in the alley. Yeah. And then when you got out there, no one was banging in the alley at this point because they ran away. Yeah, no, they. I think I totally narked on him and I feel really bad and about that, it. I should have just let them and, finish. So that means you and this other guy didn't get your beer. Nah. So everything just... Everything was fucked because of me, I, I guess. I ruined a whole weekend yeah. for a lot of people, and, I In suppose. my mind, like, my mind created kind of a different story after I heard it, that this might have been, like, an ongoing thing, and the guy in the store was like, oh, not again, and, like, maybe it was like... It could have... For all I know, I mean, this is somewhere I've never been in this place. It right. could have been a thing, because like the guy out. was ready to be like, yeah, really? It's happening? Let's go. <laughs> Like, the, the cashier uh -huh. dude was ready to go. Well, wow. well, like, so when I told James all this and we are trying to figure it out, we're like, oh, does he run out there and go, oh, no, my wife, not yeah. again. Yeah. Or, like, if there's some, like, fight or something going on between um, both, like, it's like a Romeo and Juliet thing so, between both stores. Uh, we're, we're trying to, like, come up with something. There it was in between. Um, it was in between two stores. Yeah. The beer store and the other store. I will say so. this. Uh, there weren't there was no women okay oh yeah it was two guys it was yeah it was it, that's what i imagined yeah that's what i, I thought this you is meant. new intel this yeah. wasn't like this wasn't like a couple well, this was um i think this might have been something where it's like this is just you know, some bros going at it yeah this yeah. was a this was some some bromance yeah, going on i don't on know and, why in an alley but hey i, I guess mean, whatever whatever yeah, floats your boat i have I a lot of yeah you know i've i have friends that this is a normal thing mm. oh yeah um, well, like, so I think that's what I accidentally ruined. Oh, but there was a uh, there was nary a, a, a lady in sight in this mm, entire mm -hmm. um, thing going on. Not at all. Um, am I judging? I'm just more upset no, no. that I accidentally ruined a a super consensual I ruined ascension, yeah. a session, yeah, yeah between yeah. two two dudes. Damn. And I feel bad, whoever you are, if you're watching this podcast. Yeah, if, I'm if, real sorry. If Beeren came up to you, you guys. I just thought it was funny that I I caught this happening. I um, can't think of anything more awkward to walk in on. Like no matter who it is, it's just kind of like yeah. Okay, uh, if I saw that, I'd, I would just be like, okay, I'm I'm gonna. Leave this isn't now. also <laughs> the first time I've seen something like this. I've oh, seen okay. this. I used to live in Center City, Philadelphia, in Northeast sure. Philadelphia, and yeah. I've seen oh, okay. it. So that's why I guess I kind of react the way I did. I was like, whoa! Like, you know, <laughs> it, it just happens once in a while. So okay. it, this became a huge joke. Me and James and, like, the crew, because we left our um, hotel that day to go to the event on, on Sunday. We went back to the Joe Bob event for the third day or second day or whatever. And we went back to that store. Yeah. 
we I, I grabbed everyone who was uh in, in 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 the van with us. We went to the alley and we did like forensics reporting. Yeah. Thankfully, I had bags on my feet, so therefore I had foot condoms. You didn't step on so any jizz. I, I could walk through the crime scene. And see, and we, we there was like a down satellite dish. There was like an air conditioner, and yeah. like there was like a pa- like pa- power transformer. And we we're trying to like put the pieces together. Like, okay, where were they banging? How are they banging? <laughs> um, what store are they from? Maybe if we go into the back of the store, we can take a picture and see. Maybe it was someone from inside the mm-hmm. convenience store. It was also like uh, <laughs> it just became this fun we're investigation. Like we're, thinking yeah. of, we're thinking of like too far into it but yeah <laughs> yeah it was uh there there was oh, um but by the way the uh, when i was when i was taking pictures in the store for this stupid ass video for this stupid ass <laughs> podcast um uh i passed the hot dog machine and mm-hmm. it said rough rider on it oh and i'm like operation rough rider like, <laughs> guess so yeah so none of us got beer but i did see uh you know some fun things that two day. people banging in an alley banging in an alley What's great about this is finally having some of that leisure space to get ideas. Where like you said the thing about like oh you ever have to take a shit so bad that I almost you twist, twist my ankle. your ankle yeah and like I just started dying. It was like because it, um, it was just yeah because it actually happened to me. I, I was <laughs> that was the whole thing was I yeah. I had to shit so bad that like so like I used it, it in that nerd episode like, and that's, I was in my bare feet and I went oh and then I twisted my ankle and fell down but I had to hold the shit into my well was, oh, was in uh, that was in my rock, ass that was in yeah. Rocketeer Rocketeer yeah. yeah it's the opening no that was it. we had that conversation in the morning that I said I was like yeah I had to shit so bad that I twisted my ankle and fell I'm like how and do you Jesus twist was, your like, ankle laughing. yeah it was like. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I was trying to explain, like, it hurt so bad at one point that I, w- I went on my tippy toes, <laughs> but I slipped, twisted my right ankle, fell down, but still had to hold my, my asshole together. <laughs> So I didn't shit my pants Hold while my I fell asshole down. asshole together. Like, <laughs> like it comes apart. Here, here's you know? the thing. You, you just listen to Kieran talk for like an if hour, you, and you, you just take yeah. AVGN jokes yeah, out of it. If you ever share yeah. like an apartment with only one bathroom with another person that takes a long time in the bathroom and you have to shit, that's basically <laughs> what happened. And uh, it yeah. was like one of those shits where I ate, you know, I guess I ate a lot the next, I ate a lot of fiber the last night or mm. something. <laughs> it was like, it was almost like the, the, the shit was so like rigid that it was digging into my, my pelvis bone. <sighs> oh, <laughs> that's going, yeah. there we go. I'm, uh, I'm, there we go. Everybody. So I guess aside from that, uh, James, you were see- <laughs> let's talk about something else. <laughs> uh, James, you were talking about how, uh, speaking of ABGN, you, you wanted to bring up something about the Nin Toaster? Oh, yeah. Well, a lot of times, you know, shooting these videos, there'll be sort of like either outtakes or like things that just weren't recorded that happened while I was, you know, trying to film them. So uh, a while ago, you guys got me another toaster that was the exact same toaster that the Nin, the Nin Toaster was formerly. Um, because yeah. we needed it for a, a shot where we made a joke about breadcrumbs that come out the yeah, bottom of yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, um, Because like something about, uh, there was something about the image quality I think, in the previous was it, was episode. It, um, w- I think it was, um, yeah. It was, was it? Legend of Kage. Okay. Yeah, there was like a glitch or like a way, like it wasn't recorded properly, however we did it. And basically the next episode we made a joke about, oh, it was just breadcrumbs and then the toaster. Yeah. But you had to get me like a real toaster. Well, and it, it was too, it was but- It was because we, that was when we were starting like, I think it was also like COVID filming and we didn't have all the systems in where we needed them yeah, today, mm-hmm. basically. We, uh, the so I got, I talked to the guy who made the original. Because sometimes I, I record some stuff, but sometimes you guys got to get some footage and other way. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. There's all different types of machines that are recording this on so yeah. my stuff looks different so we wanted another replica of the nin toaster so i contacted the guy who made the original nin toaster mm-hmm. and said hey what one did you use i found it i bought it on ebay and i had the actual toaster and he said yeah send it to me eventually and i'll make another one so i'll have two fully functional hdmi nin toasters the other joke, the other reason why I got it too, is I had a whole joke where I wanted to like drop it in a bathtub and kill a game that way and all that. Oh yeah, very and, morbid, and, yeah. And we didn't want to kill the actual Nin toaster, so it was like a prop, and then it was mm-hmm. not. And then, basically, in case we wanted to use the toaster, yeah, but, you but know, what, it this was, was all the setup. Anyway, yeah, we so. were using a Nintendo that we were using a, I think, S video out, and it just looked 
crummy. Yeah, it was, was a, the it was a band But that's recording. the real answer. Of yeah. course, everybody knows it's not breadcrumbs. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, yeah. That's what it was. Um, yeah. So anyway, we we did. That's the reason I had that toaster. But anyway, many many episodes later, I can't remember which one it was. It, it was somewhat recent. Um, it was definitely an NES game. It was definitely an NES game. It, and, was it uh, Crash Dummies? Uh, I don't dark. No, it no, dark was it man. Dark I, I don't, man. Oh, I don't it was remember. Dark Man. No, it was Dark, was it dark man. man. Yeah, okay. I'm pretty sure. Because it's not nothing. None of this is recorded. But uh, <laughs> so anyway, what I did. This is this is just hilarious. Uh, um, so basically, I forgot that I had that other toaster, that real one, and I was just hooking stuff up, and I was like, okay, I want it. I want this to be on the, the toaster. So let me grab it. I I grabbed it. I plugged it in. But I'm also plugging in like I had some other light I had to plug in or things, you know, I'm like multitasking stuff's going on. My, my phone probably is chiming like crazy, like it always does. And I'm like, you know, answering some texts, whatever. And, um, setting up the shot, I'm looking at the frame, focusing it. And I'm like, all right. Um, and then, you know, to get the toaster to, uh, e- even though you don't, it doesn't need to play a game. It, I still need to plug it in. Cause I like the lights to come on. Oh, which by the way, that light is starting to flicker now. It's not like working great, but, but anyway, um, I wanted the light to come on, so I, I have it plugged in this whole time. But anyway, a, li- a little bit of time's passed, and I start to notice a smell, like something's burning. And I'm thinking of all different things in the room. I'm like, oh, I wonder if it's like one of the game consoles or something. Like maybe one of the lights is got hot somehow, or like something in the room is burning. And I'm looking around, and all of a sudden I realize the the game inside the toaster. I used the real toaster. <laughs> So I'm like, fuck. Right, because it has the same mechanism to turn it on. It so. like, yeah, no, it, it looks, looks identical like, to yeah, the Nintendo. Yeah, because it looks identical, except for like there's like two slots <laughs> on the top. But still, like I, I didn't look at it close enough because I was busy doing a bunch of s- stuff. But once I realized that, I'm like, oh, fuck. I un- unplugged it. And then, um, you know, I will say it, it works as a toaster. I, yeah. I, I, yeah. I forgot if it was Back to the Future, one of the original nerd episodes. You actually put a game, like you do it, and then yeah. but you fake it. Yeah. To, like, and it just explodes or whatever. But yeah. you actually did it in real life. But I was just, you told me that, and I was like, oh my God. Really? Yeah, no, you, you, that was the at thing. Least, it was like, oh, at least the toaster works. Yeah. 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 You told me about that, and it was like, uh, it was like what what it what was the you asked me like what was what what it was the smell james sir because you told justin and then justin told me about it yeah yeah and it was like guess what justin made me play like this guessing game as to what it was and then i was like james put the game in the real toaster and it was like yup i was like oh my god like (laughs) thank god thankfully it was in there only long enough that's what we said like could you imagine like like, you put it in and then left or something for like and and then the whole everything's you know what or something like oh my god you know what with insurance the way it is if the entire nerd room burned down oh god heaven forbid if it happened for that reason That'd be pretty fucking funny. The, the the video about that story would probably make everything back. You know, the the, the monetization of the YouTube video. <laughs> I burned my own house <laughs> down with the Nintoaster. I burned my house down with the Nintoaster. Finally, like like that's the thing too is like we had to like then you know now that thing will never be plugged in ever again because like, like the, the firefighter asked me and I'm like well, did you ever hear that game Dark Man on NES? Like I'd start <laughs> I'd start with that. Yo, you could have turned into Dark Man. Oh, oh my god, like you get blown up. Oh, yeah, you boy. know it. And it's like oh, yeah. uh, you fly out the the thing yeah, like yeah, Liam yeah. Neeson. Fucking elephant. Yeah, then I have to start stealing people's faces. <laughs> so like, did the game get? melted nah, and burned I mean, all? I mean, I got it out quick enough where nothing happened. But if it if it were in for a while, then yeah, there would be some burning plastic. Nope. Yeah. That, that that that's be... an item for charity. The the dark man <laughs> yeah. burned in the nin toaster. Burned dark oh, sorry, the non-toaster. The yeah. real toaster. The real toaster. Now if you make any so toast in that thing, put, um, it just tastes like Nintendo. No, I haven't, but uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, we're back for some fan Q&A that I'm... Um, now only pulling from my Twitter. I think I said that last time. I'll ask every now and again for, uh, you know, I'll, I'll put like, hey, give us some questions. I'll, I'll make like a tweet or whatever. Okay. Um, this is from Captain Al- Alternate, uh, at Captain Alternate. Without, uh, with burnout being a real thing, mm-hmm. content creators face, how have you handled it? How have I handled burnout? Um, very good question. Because, um, yes, doing it for all these years, uh, there were times when it was bad i i've managed to make it uh where it's i don't let myself get too burned out like it, it, it's sort of like 
this red alarm, like, oh, oh God, like I can't let this happen. Because uh, the worst it got was around like 2007, 2008, especially around the time I was doing the Mario 3 episode. I remember I was sick for like four months. And um, I remember a couple times I lost my voice and couldn't even record VO. But it, it happened like um, somehow I managed to uh record whenever my voice came back and i never was stuck without it so i would still do the rest of the video while sick but when my voice came back it sounded like the voice in the exorcist um when uh you know the demon is speaking through reagan mm -hmm. and i was like oh this is perfect for the episode so i recorded all those lines like you know your mother sucks cocks in hell and all that when i had that voice because that's oh. actually what i sounded like during mm -hmm. that time um yeah, no, I mean it, it. It it was really bad for a while, um, but now I just I do everything I can to avoid getting too burned out. It, yeah, it sucks, you know, with YouTube the way it is, where you always have to get the next video out, or everything yeah, starts yeah. suffering. Like so many people get burned out from like oh the same old, same old. Thankfully, mm -hmm. Sin Masker has enough of a variety of content where we can do like this show or that mm -hmm. show and this ABGen or that. You know, you're not yeah. just making ABGens twice a week or whatever. Yeah, yeah. No, um, this was a, this is a hard year. Like you know, coming out of the pandemic and uh, doing two nerds a month and everything. I don't think like I think this might be the final year where we do two nerds a month. Yeah, because, I think so too. Because there's a reason I didn't do this. Like, but when I stopped doing this uh, during the game trailers days, I had you know like a contract to put out two uh, episodes a month and it just became too much eventually. And then I was like, you know what, like, can we, can we change this so that I just do one a month and they were cool. And uh, so I did one a month from then on. And then I don't know how we started doing two a month again, but I mean, I will say the, the episodes have been great. Like, I really like what we've been putting out. Yeah, we have some shorter ones, some longer ones. It was just because yeah. like, we, we stopped doing, I mean, James and Mike Mondays and, and, and rental reviews wasn't a thing. When we were doing yeah, yeah. weekly content and, and yeah, then yeah. the nerds on top of it, it was one a month. But yeah, yeah. now that it's been, you know, especially with like, you know, now we're out of like, we're filming again. Well, yeah, 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 the, yeah. the problem is when we were doing James and Mike Monday rental reviews and something every Wednesday, mm -hmm. be it Abigen or another review yeah. or, you know, it's bullshit. That was the biggest the channel's ever been. So mm -hmm. YouTube does reward if we were doing oh, yeah. three fucking videos a week. Oh, but yeah. we would die. YouTube yeah. YouTube rewards burnout. Yeah, basically, they do. Yeah, so they're like a you know like a. They, they I think it's easy to. YouTube. Yeah, I think when you when you're starting out, that's when it seems to be um, the hardest because then you're starting to realize what it is that is too much. You're starting yeah. to realize what you can't handle. Um, Cause I, you know, I can't do it like that. Back in the old days, I would do like these, like, you know, 18, 20 hour days or something just to finish. Like if I'm like, oh, I'm working on nerd, but then I also got to do this and I also got to do that. And like, there's all these different projects and, you know, and then you're just trying to take care of like, you know, business and maintenance stuff. And uh, like, it's almost like you're trying to do multiple jobs at the same time. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, I think I'm, I'm a lot, um, more experience with that now where uh you know well how do i avoid burnout i got you guys to help me so yeah <laughs> i get it yeah, yeah. We, we will take your burnout <laughs> yeah i yeah. mean especially on vegas stakes or some even some of the episodes last year like there were nerd episodes i was up for 24 hours editing or otherwise because you know i always have yeah. to fix the next little thing or yeah well color, that's you know. the thing too is especially like, i mean when we were doing rental reviews or or any of those shows too like you know a lot of people don't you know think about like uh, like talking about games which was part of the channel for a long time you're you're editing between three cameras uh, sound you got to sync it up you have to figure out which spot is the best who's talking when what to cut out all those kind of things um, you know, and, and if you film for an hour and a half, it takes about five hours to watch that entire hour and a half and make the cuts, then to cut through those, then to cut through those, you're, it you're editing forever. a, a yeah. one hour video over the course of about a week. It, well, what helps with burnout is if, especially if it can be your job and it's your nine to five or whatever, yeah. and then you rest when you're done for the day and you definitely take your weekends and, and just get away from it for a bit. But if you're just hammering away constantly, you're going to burn yourself out. It's e like, I, I recommend like when you're doing stuff, always move at like a good 60%, like fiber, like you're getting stuff done, but you're not rolling at like a hundred percent and you're not rolling at like zero all the time. Mm -hmm. Um, cause if you're always rolling at hundred percent or even more, you're going to fucking burn out very quickly and start resenting what you're doing. Yeah. And then it starts yeah. getting real fucked up, mm -hmm. you know? I don't know. That's my advice. So anyway, yeah. 
Also, too, watching the movies took time. Like, a lot of people are like, oh, we're watching movies, but it's like when you have to watch... Well, 31 Monster Madness yeah, movies. And, and like, for yeah. instance, I mean, just when we did... Uh, Even though I have a the, lot of help, I still got to watch the yeah, movies. So, well, when we yeah. did Cage Match. Oh, God, And Cage, and Cage Match, Match, Match yeah. was two movies, uh, you know, a week yeah, or whatever. 20 movies, which, and they were all over two hours. Over, so, yeah. so that was the thing was then on top of us, like, editing or whatever and, and filming, we also had to... I had to carve out, like, I remember 16 hours one week to watch watch all these Nicolas so Cage movies at once. The problem with rental movies, because one, we'd all, me, Karen, and Tony would pile in a van, go to your place, so that's a drive back and forth, mm -hmm. set up all the gear, break down all the gear, because it wasn't set up all the time, because um, it was like your functioning basement for your family and stuff. We'd all have to watch the movies, We all, and that, that just takes time for each of us. So then I couldn't work on this nerd episode, or you couldn't work on this um, James and Mike Monday, or whatever. So mm -hmm. we had to like, that's the real reason why rental movies uh, ended, because we had to spread out our production force to get yeah. everything else done. I feel like the one thing that, always, uh, that I always think about is I just wish I could clone myself, because so many days... It's like, I want to be working on this, but I also want to be working on this. And you can't do both. It's like, I can only do one of these things today. Mm -hmm. Which one am I going to do? Why can't I just clone myself so I could just work on all of them? Like, yeah. If you clone yourself, you could bang yourself in an alley. <laughs> <laughs> that's, cool. a, that's a line in a, a Schwarzenegger movie, too. Uh, the, the Sixth Day, the sixth I think. Day, oh, yeah. Yeah. Hey, why don't you clone yourself so you can go fuck yourself? Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. So next question here. Um, this is from Et Etskasi, at Etskasi, I can't pronounce that. Um, do you believe that aliens are visiting Earth right now, especially with all the videos being released by the government now? You got to ask Adam that question. <laughs> From the the basis, the oh my god, and his, oh, you know his, and his and his and his his visitor yeah. shows. So we have we have not gotten uh, guests yet, but we we do plan to get guests on the show. You know, we're just trying to you know get it started and everything first. Um, uh, but once, uh, you know, once we start getting, uh, more people on the show to, to drop in, then, um, Adam, that might be, uh, fun to talk about the UFOs. Cause I want to talk about like all kinds of stuff like Bigfoot, lake monsters and, uh, Atlantis. I'm a big yeah. fan of Atlantis. Yeah. Yeah. They uh, might, to, they... to answer his question though, I actually don't know. I don't really know enough about, uh, UFOs. I used to be big on, I used to be really big on it in the nineties when, um, like, I would watch any documentary. I remember when like that Alien... Like X-Files and stuff, too. Like Yeah, I remember that Alien autopsy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so scary. Yeah, yeah and I that wish, freaked me out. Which, which turned out to be fake. You know but anyway, they, they I do wish I watched X-Files. Like, I didn't watch enough of that, Um, you know. But anyway... When, when the Alien autopsy thing came out, they actually had a toy that was like a, a Play-Doh alien that you could oh, cut open and oh, pull, oh, like, really? pieces of them out and stuff. Oh, wow. And it was yeah. called, like, the Alien... Uh, It was called Alien Anatomy. Yeah. But oh, it was definitely yeah. supposed to be, like... Like alien show, autopsy, yeah. like it was supposed to, like it came out right around the same time. So, I did a report in in high school, like I did um, some kind of uh, uh, you know project on UFOs, where I would just you know I, I I guess I got all my information from like documentaries and books and stuff. I remember the teacher gave me, I I think I got a pretty good grade uh, or like a fairly good grade. I can't remember what, but. Uh, uh, he, he basically said, you know, you know, you did a good job putting this together, but I, I, I question the credibility of your sources. I actually used that in a movie in the beginning of Legend of the Blue Hole. But um, that made me think about, I was like, oh, yeah, I guess I, I, guess I couldn't really confirm a lot of this stuff. But, mm -hmm. but um, you know, at that point, uh, I wasn't – maybe he kind of sucked some of the wind out of me. Like, like, you know what I mean? Like, I was really enthused about UFOs, but he kind of like uh, – Made me feel after that, like, oh, oh man. That's like, teachers maybe, for you, man. That's teachers for I'm like, man, maybe <laughs> maybe they're not real then. I don't know. And maybe after he that, was I, an alien. Maybe, maybe the he, teacher was. Maybe he was. And he's yeah. like, Shh, get but when, off my track. Yeah, but no, but the point is when I when you talk to people like Adam and they've like looked into all this information and they're like really into it and they're like, you know, this this is something yeah. that could be real. I've had numerous barcade conversations with Adam about aliens and the, yeah. and the documentaries he watches and things like that. Yeah. Like like ghosts. Like, I mean, I don't have any experience. Like, I've never seen a ghost, but I know a lot of people that say they've seen one. And, and you can tell when somebody's joking around or trying to, you know, pull your leg. You know, these, these people I've talked to are legit. Like, they're, mm -hmm. they're I, I believe, like, what they say they saw. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, but it's I hard for me to be because a, a ghost to me is so intangible and so hard to really understand. Like, how does a ghost work? Like, what are the rules? 
like for me, it's just, it's hard to believe, but I believe when somebody tells me something that I, I can tell if they're joking around or not, you know, and a lot of these people are, are serious. So, yeah. Um, I lived in Tucson, Arizona, as I said before, growing up in the nineties. Mm. Um, so in 94, when fucking fire in the sky came out, fire in the sky. Oh my God. It's a, the Travis what's, Walton, Walter, what's the story? It's like about the actual abduction that happened in the eighties, I think. And okay. snowflake, um, I've never seen Fire in the Sky. Arizona. I've always heard that's horrifying. Though. It has the scariest alien abduction scene of all fucking time. Really? Bar none. It's fucked up. And wow. when I was 10, that fucked me up. And now I am I am super duper scared of aliens. Wow. Mind you, I don't think they're coming for me. I don't think they're flying around, whatever. But if they do, it's fucked up. And we should stop them. But... <laughs> this is, and, and then it turned out that that whole story with the guy from Fire in the Sky and all that was like bogus, and it was a lot of it was bullshit. And you know the T one thousand is in the movie, which is good as well as X Files. But oh yeah, um, oh you, yeah, Robert fucking, Patrick, Robert Patrick. Yeah, so not I, the T one thousand is like one of the aliens. That'd be time. good. <laughs> At first, I thought it's what yeah. you meant, but, but the, yeah, but the fucking alien, the aliens in that movie, man. Like I can see, I close my eyes and I can see them. Like mm. and what they do to that guy, it, it, it's wow. not good. Um, but are aliens visiting and all that stuff? I know there's probably, there's probably a lot of UFOs out there because there's a lot of like ex- experimental aircraft, mm. government bullshit. Or, you know, a lot of companies are making yeah. shit. Um, if aliens were around, they'd probably be way better at their subterfuge or, you know, they could be humans from another dimension or the future, any of that kind of stuff. But I don't think it's a regular thing. That's my opinion. Mm. You could ask the xenobiologist, the guy who paints squares for a fucking living and plays the bass in Rex Viper. He might fucking know. <laughs> Real expert over there. But yeah. for us, we're just going to leave it unexplained. I think it's oh. funnier that way. Aliens can yeah. suck my dick. Okay. <laughs> you, you, I mean, you, you might actually get that if you ask they're gonna, for it. They're like, yeah. you know what? We'll take you up on it. I imagine it looking like E.T. His dick? <laughs> like, no, I mean, E.T. sucking his dick. E.T. sucking my dick. <laughs> oh, Imagine ET sucking it. Like, or like, like or like the alien from Alien using that weird thing that comes out. Jesus like he Christ. extends his neck to like. <laughs> suck your dick. I know like well, uh, he should be like the sprite in the Atari game. Yeah, oh, okay. yeah. Like, I like the. I like the idea that your your dick has like the little oh light on the end of it, like the yeah, finger. or like his finger. The the light finger goes up my and tickles oh, my man. prostate. Oh my god. Oh. Anyway, oh, is this going in? E-T. Yep. Is it? This is definitely going in the podcast. <laughs> Suck dick. <laughs> The next question. Uh, Autumn Superstar, whose at name I'm not going to pronounce because it's kind of, I can't read it. Uh, worst sex scene of all time. Uh, that's hilarious. Well, we got two. We got banging in an alley. Yeah. We got E.T. E. sucking, sucking your my dick. dick with the, with the <laughs> light finger in my prostate. Um, um, well, I would have to think about that. That's that's a funny question. Like, uh, I mean, maybe the room. That is that's, a really bad one, yeah. That's a pretty famous one. Yeah. Um, uh, razor sharp. Razor sharp for oh. me. Actually, the the poster up there, and I talked oh, yeah. about it at the uh, at the rental reviews. Um, yeah, yeah. Thing. Uh, razor sharp has a horrible sex scene where uh, they the guy Razor or uh, what's his name uh, Troy Nicolo Ashford or Razor Sharp or whatever uh, takes the girl's shirt off and then holds her as hard as he can to his body because I guess she didn't want to show boob, but she was cool showing just her back. Okay. And she has an extremely muscular back, which I'm actually down for. But then the thing is they roll around and there's this uh, this poster of Bruce Lee in the background uh, that's just looking at it. And me me and uh, Jamie, my old roommate, we always laugh about it. He one time drew a picture in, MS, or, uh, my, uh, in Mario Paint of uh, the sex scene with the girl's back and then the poster of Bruce Lee is crying. Uh, yeah, I, I guess we're picking the room and whatever the fuck Karen just said. Yeah, razor sharp. Oh. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this podcast and have fun out there. Hopefully the skies are clear and no one's banging you in an alley. Unless that's what you're into. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know anymore. End the fucking show. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Cinemassacre Podcast. See you next Tuesday. Check out more episodes at cinemassacre.com or wherever you fill up your ear holes with podcasts. Remember to like this episode, subscribe if you haven't already, and comment below. 